Hey y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind HR. And so many times I get people who are either leaving the military or may have worked in federal government or may have worked in local government or may have worked for a public entity. And so many times folks think that, okay, I'm kind of tired of government. I'm gonna just go ahead and work in regular civilian HR. It's just not the same, especially military. Now, federal government isn't the same for several different reasons. But when we start talking about military, child, it's like getting a whole new career field. HR is just simply not the same. But don't worry. I don't want you to say, Tamika, you confuse me. How you mean? It's human resources. It's the same. And we just talking about the people. What I've done is I've broken that down for you. So let's talk about the difference between government HR and civilian HR. Now, when we talk about government HR, many people can get a little bit like excited about it and the craziest thing is like they're not all talking about the same thing when they talk about government hr so some people are talking literally about the federal government working for the federal government in some capacity supporting the hr department for whichever facilities they may have. We all know that the U.S. federal government has offices everywhere for different reasons. If that's travel, if that's safety, is that military, what have you. Taxes, of course, how could we forget about that one? But there are tons of reasons to have like a governmental facility, office, location. So there are tons of different opportunities to work in HR for the actual federal government. Another type of government HR is, instead of working for the federal government, you may work for the state government. So the state obviously supports the federal government for schools, prisons, hospitals sometimes, like things that are state owned. And then you also have your local government. So your local government either covers the county or the city. So that's a whole different type of government, right? Because if it's for the county, it could be for serious courts that really put people into like federal time or extended long time into prison. It could be to cover a much wider area. You're still gonna cover your police officers. You're probably gonna get more into like higher level police officers. County always covers or at least in South Carolina, I'll say it always. The county also covers school teachers too. So people may work for a county and now they qualify for state and county benefits. So now you have an HR department that's supporting like teachers and schools as well. And so the city is primarily for whatever the city provides for those who live local. The city could be for police officers, firefighters, for your emergency team, like your EMS. It could be for your golf course. It could be for your street cleaners. It could be for those who maintain the grounds and keep it all clean. It could be for so many different things, but it's everything that supports the city. Let's talk about one more type of government that I have not hit on. So I've hit on the state, I've hit on the county, I've hit on the city, I've hit on the federal government, right? There's also military. Military government, they have HR too. I personally am a big, big fan of civilian HR. My experience in government was with the state level and the city level. That's my experience. I worked a little bit, like I had colleagues and we did trainings and stuff with folks in the county level, but I've never literally worked for the county. But I had enough experience working for local government that it told me I absolutely didn't want to go any higher. Absolutely didn't. I spent my first four, almost five years working in government HR. That was the start of my career. So it wasn't like a short period of time, in my opinion. That was a long time. I am such a big fan of civilian HR. So civilian HR is anything outside of a government or federal capacity. So that could be your nonprofits, that could be your for-profits, that's various industries like your auto, your retail, your consumer, your businesses, your technology, like all of those things are like just traditional civilian HR. Now military HR, I've had a lot of colleagues over even before I even thought about my HR career. And I, I've picked their brain over and over. Even when I was studying for the SHRM, I was in classes with folks that were in military. I mean, I've even had a friend who committed suicide and his, I supported his wife and she had to go through HR a lot. So I was there seeing her go through that and how she interacted with HR. So military HR is all the way different from civilian HR and in my opinion, government HR. It's a different type of government, but military HR is a whole nother animal. And I feel so bad for folks in military HR because they are assume that they can go straight into civilian HR and that's a whole different animal, completely different animal. So now this video already going to be long. So we ain't doing a ton of talking about military. We're just going to put military with government. <laughs> As I want to talk about the benefits. Let's start on the highs and we'll just end it on things that aren't so positive and why I'm not excited about it. But I think this part's going to make all of us happy, right? So let's point out the obvious. For government HR, 
they have transparent um, salary charts that you can see. So no one's ever confused about how much they can get paid, right? Everybody automatically know this is a GS this, or if it's like for the county or the state or city, most times it's posted online. Most times when somebody makes over a certain amount and here in South Carolina, it's $50,000 a year, then that's posted publicly online. So you know folks salary on an annual basis. Most times whenever you apply to their job, the salary bands are listed there. So it's, it's no hidden secret on how much you're going to get paid, how much they're offering for this position. The only difference that I don't like, and I guess I should have put this in the pros, I mean, in the cons section, but one thing I don't like about that transparency is the higher you go in government, the wider the pay bands get. And I think that that's unfair because now they leave you shooting in the dark. You really don't know what you're getting. When I see these pay bands this wide, it makes me feel like there's inequities because I've seen it so much in my career. With government HR, they work a little bit slower. So that really makes it easy for you to get a lot of practice over time and not to feel rushed to go from one technique, one process, one, just whatever is taught to you new. You don't have to do a lot of me mental pivots to learn a new concept. So they move really, really slow and makes it easier for your learning curve. Cause even moving that slow, not only do you get a chance to emotionally and mentally recover from doing something for the first time or doing it again and probably making mistakes, but you also get more hand holding. You also get more patience from other folks with your learning curve, more time to breathe, to go through that learning curve. Learning curves are tough when the time span is shorter. So that's another great benefit of government HR is that things move slow. So the next benefit is that there's stability inside the benefits. And so this part, we got to talk about a few things because y'all hit all over me in the comments and I was just like, child, I hear you, but think about it. All right. So the benefits are pretty stable because you always know that there's certain benefits you're going to get working in government HR. You're going to automatically get that medical, dental, vision. You're automatically going to get, yes, public stu service student loan forgiveness. So much of you excited about this public, public service student loan forgiveness. We're going to talk about that too. You get stability in your benefits. So even with your benefits, it's a little bit easier working in government HR because a lot of times you get like first time home buyers like perks they're there i'll say this they are a lot more available for a long time specifically here in south carolina there's been a lot for firefighters school teachers police officers where they get thousands of dollars given towards them getting a home and they still qualify for other first time home buyer benefits that just makes things a little easier there's some cities that give money to you on top of the first time home buyer benefits that you qualify for that's another great benefit of working for like government hr is if you need that type of assistance or you're looking for that type of assistance but let's talk about this public service student loan forgiveness what i'm going to do is put on the stream so you guys can see exactly what the minimum requirements are. I'm not going to tell you, oh yeah, that's a great benefit, da, da, da. I do think it's a great benefit. I feel horrible that there's not enough education about this benefit. And so I wanna go through these benefits and tell you what type of perks you're gonna get. The first thing about it is, it's paying you back a fraction of your student loans over a super long period of time. You know, instead of waiting on the cons, I'm gonna just go ahead and tell y'all now. With this public service student loan forgiveness, it really sucks because they're taking that as like your education reimbursement. If you go work in civilian, you, you can get so much more money in a shorter period of time. So I really don't understand why people stay on a job for 20 years that's gonna just keep increasing them by 50 cents or a dollar every year when you can work for a company that's probably gonna increase you by 10, $15 more per hour, definitely anywhere from 10 to 30, 40% pay increase and also give you the same benefit and give you even more money. So I'm a little confused. Do you want to spend a ton of time waiting just to get your student loans paid back? You know, meanwhile, I have literally worked with firefighters who are just at the brink of not being able to qualify for like food stamp or ABC vouchers so that their kids can go to school and be and not be okay at home like lose their home lose their cars use one car for a family of seven i've seen a lot of things and i think that that's the part that makes me say open your eyes the federal government is just giving you just it's like dangling that carrot over your head but it refused to let you bite it and i'm not even saying just federal hr but any governmental hr it's repetitive but if you work in civilian hr there's so many companies that offer different things 
things. There's so many companies that listen to your feedback and provide it. There's so many companies that may not have had that in that budget, but they may put that in a miscellaneous budget and still help you anyhow. That happened to me more than once. More than once. Now, let's talk in a little bit more details. I'm not just going to show it to you. I'm going to walk y'all through this thing because I used to educate people on it all the time. And in my opinion, I noticed that people would get excited, but then it means like you literally have to marry your job. Well, now you don't get flexibility in trying to learn your job better because you're sitting here just waiting on this money, right? The military hires by association instead of by skills. So if you're like a military spouse, a military child, you get a higher chance of getting a job, which means somebody who might be more qualified for you is probably not going to get the job, but you will because you are attached to the military. So that's a good benefit for those who want to work in government HR, right? Or those who are in the military kind of helps you get the job, kind of your network. And the civilian world, we use an actual network. There, you're already attached to like this network. So that's a benefit. I'm not even gonna talk about it and sound like I'm upset about it, cause I'm not. That's the way it works, right? That's the rule. Some of the benefits of civilian HR is that it's easy to create effective initiatives quickly. So one thing that irritated me when I worked in government is that we had a wellness program. Our wellness program was, you do these different wellness initiatives, we'll give you PTO hours. That worked, but we can only give eight hours a year. I think some people could roll over up to 16 hours. So you only get two days off. It was good, but it was like, can't we do more? Like what, what else can we do? So some of the things that I had heard other companies doing who aren't in government is that they were giving away, like back then, you know, the, the Apple watches were like huge, massive back then. Even the exercise watches were just coming out. Like they were massive. And, and the good thing about it is that it helped companies to like say my employees are being healthy because they do this 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 and this and we've tracked them and we see that they're being healthy and that used to help with the insurance costs like i got so frustrated because our government wouldn't pay for that we actually were able to get some of our benefits folks like our account managers and stuff to like sponsor some at a benefit fair that we'd had every year but it was frustrating because it was like if we did this on a regular basis not only would this help us with insurance not only would this help with employee engagement not only would this help with with employee retention, but like this would help people feel like HR actually cared for them, the company actually cared for them. And so it just blew my mind. I want to be able to identify something that works well for employees, test it out a bit. Let's launch this. Why does it take us a year? I'm talking about benefits and then I sound excited and all upset, but um, just saying that, that the, with the civilian HR, it is easier to create unique and effective initiatives quickly. Not so easy in government. Another thing is with the civilian HR is constantly opportunities to have your salary increase constantly. First of all, you can leave and go to another company and just roll your retirement over. People are like, well, I'm staying for the pension. Now government doesn't give the pension anymore. So people are like, well, I'm staying for the retirement. The 8% that they was taking out of my check back then, I already doing 10% now on a personal basis and already got other forms of retirement. I got more money than if I had waited for the state government's retirement. The next thing about civilian HR is that it has a wider variation of benefits. The company that I currently work for, not only do we offer the traditional, right? So we offer the medical dental vision. We offer paid short-term and long-term disability. We, we give money into HSA and FSA. We also offer benefits like the Calm app. So you can use a premium Calm app to help you with being calm. We reimburse you for your fitness. We give you money to go and volunteer for a company. Not that we give you dollars, but we pay for your time off to go volunteer somewhere. The company I worked for before, we did the same thing. Like we would not only be off early on Fridays, but you could get paid to volunteer here. You could also get reimbursed for your fitness. It's like, why wait for the government who just giving me these basics? Like for what? They're not giving us much anymore. A majority of my career since I've left local government, and my benefits have always been better. Yeah. Majority of my career. What has happened is that the baby boomer generation has really molded us that working for the federal government, working for local government, just working government period is such an amazing place because they had the option of getting really nice pensions and retirements when they leave. We ain't got that y'all. They're not doing that for us no more. Anyhow. All right. So the next benefit of civilian HR is that HR is seen as a strategic partner. As long as you work for an organization that understands and values HR, which there's a lot of them now, especially since COVID, government, oh my God, we were like the stepchildren, both government um, facilities I worked at, and we never got like our own budget. They were like, oh, 
your budget is salaries and benefits. That's it. You could never do anything extra. If we did anything, well, you guys don't bring in any revenue. Yeah, we don't bring in revenue in other organizations, but because we're a strategic partner, they understand that the efforts that HR does really give such a return on investment in various places across your company. Anyhow, all right, see, I'm getting excited again. We didn't even get to the negatives and I'm excited. So let me run through the negatives. So the negatives for government HR is that it just takes too long to increase your compensation or to improve your benefits. It just does. I can't tell you how we have like suggested better and better benefits. Even our insurance carriers have, our brokers have, and year after year's decline, we don't got it in the budget. It takes five years, three, four, five years before one thing get approved. That's just ridiculous in my opinion. The next thing about government that I don't think is amazing and that I think is an absolute negative is that jobs are repetitive. There's no variation in these jobs. Now, there's not only not a variation in the type of jobs that are available, there's no variation in the type of work that you do. You become a robot. You can't even think creative. This is why so many people struggle with strategy because you come out of government where you've just worked as a robot. You've been transactional. So now somebody tells you to think ahead, think outside the box, make some assumptions, use data to project the future. You can't do it. You're struggling. The next thing that's a negative for government HR is that HR just ain't seen as a strategic partner. I already told y'all that, so we're going to keep going. All right. So the next negative about government HR is that military is extremely repetitive. They literally just do, they like process orders. If that's an order for you to move to somewhere else, if that's an order for you to do, start doing another job, if that's an order for... You process and orders all day long, which is the same thing. You also being told exactly what to do in the military. They give so much training that people who come to the civilian side, they get angry because they're like, well, why are they not going to teach us? They didn't teach none of us. We went to school. We went out there and did trial and error. We use resources, but nobody takes 16 weeks to sit down and give me a curriculum where I'm sitting in front of a class, listening to an instructor every day for X number of hours and still getting paid. That's just not where civilian HR or civilian jobs are. But in the government, you do the same job over and over. I say that's a negative because it doesn't prepare you not only for the next level, but it doesn't prepare you for anything outside of what you're doing. In civilian HR, you have different industries, you have different company sides, you have different leaders. It allows you to think differently, the company changes differently, so you're learning all types of stuff which lets you qualify to not only move up in that organization or move up outside of that organization, but to move to any organization and be absolutely fine. The negatives about civilian HR, because there are some negatives about civilian HR, and the first thing is that the com compensation is just really transparent. You're not going to see the compensation for civilian HR really posted everywhere. That's why so many people are pushing for the Equal Pay Act and things like that. So I talked about that in my blog. I'll definitely put the link to that below. But I went into full detail on what the Equal Pay Act is and it's only being used in a few states across the U.S. If we can get that done federally, I think things will be better. But in civilian HR, it's just not transparent. Most times. Some companies are transparent about it. Most companies aren't. It's just not as transparent as government HR. Now, another negative about civilian HR is that most cultures are created around like arrogant. Most cultures are created around ignorance too. So a lot of times people will get so excited because they've moved up in this position. And if they don't understand what this other person does, it may come across condescending or arrogant. So that really works rough for HR because if someone's not used to your HR techniques and they're in a high position, that makes things a little bit uncomfortable. You got to do a lot of kissing ass to get them right. And if you ain't doing that, then you're doing a lot of education, Kaden. Even at times you don't feel like it, you don't have the energy for it, you got another project that's super duper important. And that for me has been very, very challenging throughout my career at more than one organization. Cause I'd be like, Lord, if you get off your high horse, we can just learn this thing and keep going. But <laughs> that's okay to not know. Just, it's bad to not learn. Now let's be clear. That was a lot to take in. You didn't realize that there's so many differences. But don't think that I just pulled this out of my butt. I'm telling you this from experience. So here I'm gonna tell you all about my experience working in government HR, which is where I started my career before going into civilian, regular HR, non-government HR. So listen, I want you to think that I'm just being biased because I don't work in government HR. Maybe she wanna work in government HR. That's why she feels this way. Nope, I have my personal experience. So now let's talk about my personal experience in government HR. I started my career as an HR assistant for a local government. And then I worked there for about either a year and a half or two years. 
And then I went to another local government, which means both of them I worked for the city. I was there for about three years. Combined is, is five years that I worked in local government. The first municipality had about 250 employees. And then the second municipality that I worked for, it had about 350 employees. So pretty small. So the first municipality I worked as an HR assistant. The second one I worked as an HR specialist. The bad thing about that is Heidel was HR specialist, but I functioned completely as an HR generalist. Had no clue that my pay was being shrunk down <laughs> because the city didn't want to pay for a generalist. Oh my goodness. So that is the first problem that I immediately noticed when I started educating myself on like different type of HR positions, how to grow my career, that type of thing. And I stayed because one, I really admired my director. I also stayed because I had been an HR assistant. So I felt like, okay, well, this isn't diving me straight into being an HR journalist or if that people really expect me to function as a journalist, but they did. They did. I totally functioned as a journalist. That was one thing that kind of put a sour taste in my mouth working for local government is because we did that all the time. Like we would change titles so we could pay somebody less. People are so eager to start their career or get their foot in the door because y'all love that line. I don't want to just get my foot in the door. I want to go where I belong. I want to go where they value me, where they understand me. You ain't doing me no favors. I realized that I was the only one that that was being done to and I, I just felt like, okay, yeah, you know, red flags, red flags dropping everywhere. It didn't create any job growth for me. You literally had to wait on people to retire for you to move up. I wanted to work for some place where I wasn't sitting around waiting on somebody to retire and get cl close to death because I I mean, that means I'm just getting older too. And I also wanted variation in my career. But some of the things that I actually absolutely loved about working in local government is that things move slow. It gave me so much time to really get comfortable with something. It gave me time to like really research it. It gave me time to poke around to my resources. It gave me time to attend different trainings to learn it. It gave me more time to like train over time. So I really liked that things move slow early in my career. It really gave me time to ramp myself up in a, in a comfortable way. Now, I'm not saying that I worked slow in my career for five years and that worked for me. I think by the time I was at like year three, I was over going that slow because I realized that the slowness wasn't just me. It was totally like the organization taking forever to approve and, and most times wouldn't even approve stuff. The, another thing that I liked about working in local government is that there was a long time before you got like more detailed training. So like if you learned something, you would be able to work on that for a long time before you had to go into like a detailed training for something totally different. So not a ton of mental pivots. Another thing was that they were more open to giving full autonomy. I think that's the sad part about it is that here I am wanting to grow my career. They know I want to grow my career. So they both allow me to test different things, attend different meetings, make different decisions. They allow me to grow my career without getting a pay or the title. And they both literally said, as soon as I retire, you can come and get this position. And I was so young and like just naive back then that I thought that was such a great thing and now I look at it as that's really a slap in somebody's face you know what I'm saying like yeah just hang around for 20 or 30 years and then you got what I got and there were just so many things between both of those directors I noticed that I was like this ain't even fair to me <laughs> Like y'all cool and all, I like y'all, but they didn't know any better. Like they were older people. They had kind of stumbled into their careers because HR wasn't an official thing when they started their career. You know, they liked the fact that I like going out there and learning new things. I taught them a lot of new things. They taught me a lot, but I taught them a lot too because they had just got in the habit of just doing like the same things over and over. You know, it, it just sucked too because they gave me this autonomy because both of them were like mentally checked out. Like they were, they had quiet quit and just figured, okay, Tamika will do all the work because she's eager she's excited she's brand new and like they have voiced this to me so that's the craziest thing now that I've educated myself now that I've learned better now that I know better I realize that that's really not a positive thing I think the biggest thing for me and I'm I'm gonna just be a little bit transparent about this because I don't want to beat these ladies up first my first HR director she passed from breast cancer my second HR director she was cool and so I don't have a problem with either one of them but I think the biggest thing for me was Though these things were good for them at that time, I don't think they realized that there were days that I literally didn't have gas to, gas money to put in my car. There were days when my car would go broke and I had no way how that was going to happen. There would be days that I had to beg for like extended time to pay for my daughter's after school because I couldn't afford the $50 for that week because maybe I decided to go to church more often than regular. My church is far out there, so I burned out m most of my gas. So that took away from the daycare money. Like 
I don't think either one of them really, they empathize, but I don't think they ever literally like put their, sh their feet in my shoes. And so it was a little annoying because those are the reasons why I worked so many side hustles because it ain't like either one of them giving me $20 for, to go get something to eat on lunch break. <laughs> Like I literally will pack my lunch every day. I started that early in my career. I started that before I started my HR career. So happy I did because that helped me save money a lot. But it's not that I'm beating you guys up saying like, don't work for the, for the government because it's horrible. I'm just saying don't settle for such a shitty quality of life just for a job. Cause if a job care about you, they wouldn't want you being up in the middle of the night, like stressed to death because you don't know how you're going to pay this bill or rushing out on your lunch break to ask for an extension on the light. If a job cares about you they'd want you to live comfortably at least to be able to pay those things like your light bill goddamn forget this this don't sound right but i'm gonna go ahead and get dave ramsey's course because they were doing the dave ramsey course like locally i watched my director intentionally plan her vacation three to four times a year and i had never been on vacation in my life. That was just crazy to me. I'm like, damn, just throw it in my face. Don't have the empathy for me. But it's like, if you had given me financial literacy, increased my compensation, I would have been able to take just a few days off and like go to Myrtle Beach. Like I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Like I don't need to go, you know, all these far places that they went, but just let me be able to go and vacation. Like I didn't even know what that was like. And now I'm so happy because vacations, in my opinion, are like needed in your life. <laughs> I swear they are. Now, one thing I did like about working for local government is that like it was so slow and boring most times because like you literally working for the city right so things are repetitious but it was so slow that I would literally sit on the people computer or bring my notes and like study you know I had to be discreet about it and hide it because they want you to be always working but child it's so damn slow I get all the work done and now here I'm gonna spend the rest of the day studying for my, my SHRM certification like I had like that um I they did pay for me to take a course they paid for me to for my study materials they paid for me to actually take the exam that's when I told you guys about ways to get money to pay for your certification because I also got the, the scholarship. So I paid them back the money that I got from the scholarship. But those are several ways right there that I was able to pay for it because it was so expensive but I had the money. So I put the link to that below too so you guys can know about some ways to get your certifications paid for. I did like that they gave me that educational reimbursement. And I can't even say it was educational reimbursement because for both of them, they knew we didn't make enough money to be paying for no education. So they just usually pay for stuff ahead of time for us and particularly my SHRM exam or whatever. I I also like that our calendar was so repetitious that it was like I knew what we had going on every year. I like our repetitive annual calendar. It took us no time to figure out when it's going to be open enrollment. When are we going to meet with the brokers to renew our health data? Okay, when are we going to do benefits fair? When are we going to launch the new version or reset for the wellness programs? Like it was such a repetitive calendar. I like variation and being able to do different things, but I also like like stability. Now, now I wouldn't like how slow that went, but I like that back then was how slow it went. Now I needed to go a little bit more fast paced. So I'm gonna be bored to death. Some of the things I didn't like about working in local government, local government got me so prepared. I went straight into being a journalist at my next job. Three months into that, they saw that I was killing the game and they promoted me to assistant HR manager. But I went into that job and in three months, I created an employee handbook, implemented a COBRA program. I implemented an applicant tracking system, was working on a um, HIS, revamped like their PTO policy their workers comp policies like sis killed all of this stuff in like three months they wanted it done fast and I did it fast they paid me more money to like get all of this done pretty quickly but all of that I would have never been able to do in local government like just never they'd be moving slow as hell but some of the things I did not like about working in the local government was there's just no career growth they move too slow so that's a benefit but as you get better and better in your career it gets annoying too many channels to get a pay increase I felt like I was like begging for my man for money and my grandmama always said to us baby don't beg nobody for nothing I felt so uncomfortable like things move so slow like even asking for a salary and like you don't want to keep asking for it or I didn't want to keep asking for it because I was just like now I feel like I'm begging another thing I didn't like about local government was that HR was just not seen as a strategic partner we used to do like um, a bunch of retirement trainings or whatever because a lot of our benefit came from the state so though I worked for the city, we had a lot of benefits and other things that came from the state. And we had a lot of like requirements we had to meet for the state. So I felt like I also worked for the state too, because I was constantly involved with the state on different things too. The county as well. It's almost like they all kind of go together. So it was just the same things. They all slow not trying to pay you a ton of money. They're not trying to let you learn a lot. Whatever you find out, you're going to figure out on your own because they ain't nobody trying to tell you. You're going to watch some people who make a lot of money and absolutely don't do any work. 
it was slow. When I thought of something creative, they did not ever want to say yes. And there's two different local governments, so I had like it. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like, it's killing my mood talking about it. I'm so happy I'm free. <laughs> to praise the Lord, I'm free. <laughs> I don't know if y'all in the AME church, but that's what I saw. And child, it is so crazy, right? That was a lot to take in. You've taken in the differences between civilian HR and government HR. Then I told you all about my experience in government HR. And child, I don't even know how we got here because I really wanted to see out of this league because I know federal folks are married to the, working in the federal government because we looked at it as being career goals for a long time. Baby boomers thought that was the place to go. We were so happy because back in the day, it really worked for us. It was career stability. We got the pension and all of this great stuff. Stuff, right I never intended to like tell you all of those things <laughs> never did but it was sparked up in like maybe one or two lines I said when I did a video talking about outdated HR jobs and uh yeah a couple of those were government related but Oh boy, I really load you up on this one. If you found any value in this video, do me a favor and definitely hit the like button. If this is your first time here or you are not a subscriber, do me a favor and just join again because child, I just gave you a whole lot of information. You really should subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss more good information to guide you in your human resources career. For those of you who are returning, I know that was a lot. I haven't done a long, long, long video like this in quite some time, but I thank you so much for continuing to watch, continue to subscribe, continue to support, and I hope to bring you more value throughout your HR career. As usual, I can't wait to see you on the next video. <laughs>